while there still may, may be some reluctance, there may still be a little bit of resentment, of fear, of anger, of pain, of feeling hurt, there is also at the same time a small amount of energy of being willing to work on it or at least being willing to discuss things. everyone welcome to morning coffee thank you all so very much for tuning in so this is going to be your general energy reading for your day your weekend or whenever this resonates for you yeah so please keep in mind this is a general reading so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't also this is a timeless reading so whenever you're guided to watch this reading as it, and it resonates for you then that is the message for you in that moment of course if it doesn't resonate if it doesn't really make sense or doesn't quite fit just now it most likely will fit in later, yeah? As always, you guys can check the playlist if you wanna dive down the rabbit hole of morning coffee readings, yeah? So, happy Friday, guys. We made it to the weekend, yay. We've made it through another week, excellent. I hope you guys have had a good one. Um, it's been a pretty good week for me. It's been pretty chill. I haven't really been trying to do much other than, you know, what is like really necessary. Um, I really kind of find myself sinking more and more into this energy of literally just letting things happen, just going with the flow, taking every day as it comes, taking things day by day, and focusing on just being happy, you know, and it's really helping. It's really a really nice thing. I, I feel at least in this moment that I've come to a nice place um, that I can settle into and just be and not worry about, I literally wanted to just say, and just not give a damn. It's nice, you guys. I, I highly recommend that you do as much of that as you can, yeah? All right, so we're gonna get into today's message, keeping it up with the week here, closing out our week. We do have the vice versa deck. This is going to be our main tarot deck. And then we are getting our oracle guidance from the Los Carabello, and then, of course, crossing the oracle bridge when we get there, yeah? All right, y'all, let's get into this and see what we have for today's session. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve their highest good and the highest good of all involved. Please give us clear and accurate representation of the energies in terms of these situations, situationships, romances, circumstances, and places in which we all need it the most. Thank you so very much, Spirit. Alrighty, guys, five shuffles. One. All right, so uh, after yesterday's session, um, there are uh, like a bunch of the cards got turned reverse while I was shuffling them. This is two. And I thought yesterday, instead of just going through the deck and, and fixing things, I think I'm just gonna rock with it for now. So let's just see what happens. Yeah, this is three. For those of you that don't know me, or haven't been following me for long enough, um, I don't normally like to keep my decks in reverse, or my cards in reverse in the deck. This is three. So, but today I just feel like let's just let it happen, yeah? This is four. And this is five. Whoops, try that again. Alrighty, kids, let's get into today's message, yeah? What's going on? What do we want to talk about? Alright, so it seems at this point, there is an effort to do the work, to get the work done. Um, okay. I guess we're still talking about the same situation, whatever it is we've been talking about over the last week. Um, but it seems, okay, so this is definitely a continuation of yesterday's reading. 
and even the day before that. So, okay, cool. We're continuing with the story. Um, at the bottom, or I'm sorry, overall energy, you have the Ten of Swords. Oops, sorry, sunlight. The Ten of Swords here. Uh, but this is the side of the, the, I mean, the Ten of Swords represents, um, you know, endings of a really bad or tough or difficult situation, yeah? I mean, it's over. It's done. You can't get any more dead than having Ten Swords in your back, right? Okay. Um, even underneath the Ten of Swords is death here. And it, oh, my good Lord. Sorry, the sun is intense this morning. Um, and this is the side of death in which it seems that a rebirth is happening. Okay, so this is a good thing. There's illumination, there's clarity. However, this I'm not, it's not escaping me that there's still a sense of sorrow here. I mean, other than the fact that we do have the Five of Cups coming out here. Okay, so there's still some sorrow. There's still some mournful energy in terms of the situation right now. However, I do want to say it is it really is coming to a close. And I feel like... Um, you may be a little less likely to be as cold with people as you may have been in the past. So let's talk about what's here. You have the Three of Pentacles. You have the Queen of Swords, but it's the side of the Queen of Swords in which she's facing us now. Okay, this is a good thing. I like this. We also have the Lovers. The Lovers did come out in reverse, and then you have the Five of Cups. Okay, and so... I guess what I want to say is you're facing the situation now. You may it, it kind of feels like at this point in the in the situation or in the energetic cycle or whatever you want to call it, it feels like you may be more willing to at least discuss something whereas in the past with this queen of swords her back was to us, right? So you weren't really talking to anybody. You weren't trying to really discuss it with anybody. There was a lot of energy of going within and trying to figure it out yourself with the three of pentacles here it is now because i think it was yesterday or was the day before or whenever the three of pentacles came out in relation to this situation previously it was this side of the coin <laughs> this side of the coin it was this side of the card which to me was speaking to you working on your own working solo in trying to rebuild your foundation or figure out figure out what's going on here or work on yourself in terms of whatever this Ten of Swords energy represents for you, right? Well, now it's this side of the card where we have the other two players coming forward and you can see them here. And to me, coupled with the Queen of Swords here now facing us, it feels like while there still may, may be some reluctance, there may still be a little bit of resentment, of fear, of anger, of pain, of feeling hurt, there is also at the same time a small amount of energy of being willing to work on it or at least being willing to discuss things. If you are having a conversation with someone about this, I don't feel like you are... I don't really feel like you're trying to compromise. If anything, what this feels like is you talking about it, but talking about it to get your point across. There's still, there is still a pretty strong energy of being fairly cold. Um, you're a little more open to discussing the situation, but I don't think... If you agree to have, again, if you agree to have a conversation with someone about this, I really don't feel like you're looking to really give, get any sort of resolution. I feel like it's more, you're just in a more willing energy to speak your truth or talk about what you're going through or talk about how you feel in the situation. I really don't feel like this, whatever conversation could be come up, coming up for whomever this is for, I really don't feel like it's really going to be much of a conversation of um, resolution. I don't feel like you really are trying to get that because I feel like you're still going through the emotional cleansing, clearing, and healing process. Here's the thing about the Ten of Swords, or at least this side of the Ten of Swords here. It is, it, it is the depiction of an individual or at least a suit of armor that's been pierced through, right, with ten swords. And I've always seen this card as the individual that is sitting there staring at the ten swords in that suit of armor 
that was the individual that was in that suit of armor. Now, don't ask me how, like, logistically he's going to get out of the suit of armor and sit there staring at it with all those ten swords stuck in it, okay? Like, whatever. You're being a little too practical, okay? <laughs> but I, I just, to me, the imagery invokes a feeling of somebody looking back on it kind of reminiscing about it. In some ways, this could be good. In other ways, I don't feel like it's the best because it still gives me an energy of Five of Cups, of just um, maybe being overwhelmed by the emotions. The other thing that makes me feel that way is the fact that the sun is eclipsed by the moon here in this card, okay? And so to me, that kind of feels like, sure, you may be looking back on it and it may be over, but there is still a level of some sort of emotion that is eclipsing the reality or the awareness of the situation that may be trying to come through here. The saving grace in this is the fact that underneath that card, underneath the Ten of Swords, is death. Like, see, this is the side of, this is the other side of death here. We actually see the figure of death. But on this side of the card, there, it's like the rebirth is happening. You have those two pillars, which are actually the same pillars from the moon. And you have the sun rising in between those two pillars. And you have a scene of just, it seems like it's a bright and happy scene. To me, this is the scene of a rebirth happening. So you may be a little more willing to talk about what it is you're feeling, or at least your stance or your point of view about it. But ultimately, the emotions are still getting to you here. Which, which I'm not going to harp on, which I'm not going to sit here and say, you know, get over it, suck it up. Like, no, it feels like you're going through the process. I mean, there has been progress since we started talking about this situation, you know, systematically as we've been moving through it throughout the last few days. There has been progress here, okay? So, so don't get caught up or don't get wrapped up in how emotional you may feel right now. That's a natural part of the process. You have every right to feel that emotion and work your way through it. Now, the last thing you have here is the lovers in reverse. And really, the only thing that I'm getting from the lovers in reverse is that this is a romantic relationship that is no longer in service. <laughs> it, like, it's out of commission. There also could be, with this lovers in reverse here, there also could be a realization of whatever situation you're dealing with here ultimately turned out to not be I'm trying to choose my words wisely here because what I want to say is, or at least what I felt was that it turned out in the long run to not be for your highest good. But at the same time, I don't really believe that because ultimately this is still serving. I say ultimately a lot, don't I? Sorry. This is still serving to benefit your highest good because you're learning something from it. Like you can... Like, there is a way to grow exponentially through this situation. Obviously, that comes from facing your emotions, which, is, which it seems you're doing here. Okay? I mean, the Queen of Swords has turned around from having her back to us to now she's facing us here. So at least she's willing to communicate at this point. Okay, I, I was I was just asking if I should get another pull from this deck, and they said, no, just clarify. And really, all I want to clarify here is the lovers in reverse. Let's talk about this. This seems to be the deeper aspect of this situation. All right, five shuffles. One. Two. Three. Alright, 
So, the lovers in reverse. Let's talk about this. Okay. Okay. I get it now. So at the bottom of the deck, you have the Seven of Pentacles. And you, underneath that, you have the Sun. Of course, you do also have the Five of Cups underneath that. But then you have that to the Page of Pentacles and the King of Cups. And Temperance. All right. Um, so you also, sorry, you also have the Knight of Cups here that's come out with the Ten of Cups and the Eight of Swords. All right. So, so what the lovers in, rep in, in reverse is representing in this situation here, it is representing something that is not for your highest good. And so that it, it, it makes sense now as to why I didn't quite feel right about saying something Something about this is not for your highest good, but yet it is because you're learning something through it. I feel like, and like, don't shoot the messenger here, but what I feel like this is saying is, I feel like there are some of you out here that are dealing with this situation that are contemplating going back or re-accepting this into your life in some way. Knight of Cups. Somehow, with this Queen of Swords turning around, from turning her back to having her to facing us. This could lead to a conversation which or in which softens or thaws this person out a little bit and they start it's almost as if they start reminiscing about the past and I just feel this energy of softening or de-thawing a little bit. And then questioning or contemplating whether you want to try this again or whether you want to let this person back into your life. Or let this situation or circumstance run its course again somehow. So like there's, the, I'm feeling an energy of wanting to try again because your heart is opening up potentially and it feels like you're recognizing that you do want this Ten of Cups energy. However, I don't feel like this is the right situation for you to, 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 to get back into. And that's why I feel like the lovers is in reverse here. You have this eight of swords energy that is, that I feel like is an old mindset, that I feel like is a sense of, of um, is a mindset that had you in this relationship or this circumstance to begin with, and you're needing to break free from that. There's something about this situation that is not allowing you to see clearly. Eight of Swords, okay? Uh, well, at least in the past, the Eight of Swords is representing what the, the mind space or the mindset that you were in that had you in a situation like this to begin with. And I feel like at this point, you're recognizing or you're being provided with the opportunity to recognize that you really need to put this to rest for once and for all. You really need to allow yourself to really fully migrate out of this mindset before you can actually see clearly. Because then underneath the deck at the bottom, you do have the seven of pentacles to the sun. This is asking you to allow yourself to be aware of the cycle that has been going on here. The Seven of Pentacles can represent a situation in which you're doing something over and over and over again the same way, but expecting a different result. What I'm feeling with the Seven of Pentacles here is this is saying to you, recognize how this situation has been moving or has been flowing ever since it started. Recognize the red flags. Recognize the ways that things just keep repeating over and over again and never seem to change no matter how much you may want them to. Recognize the pattern. Recognize about what it is, recognize what it is about this situation that you do not want in your life any longer. And then continue to face the emotions. Continue to face the upheaval, the upset, the, 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 the mourning and whatnot, whatever, because 
you are moving to a new reality, Page of Pentacles, in which you are more emotionally aware, more, more emotionally mature, more emotionally balanced and, and solid, and have a greater sense of balance within yourself, temperance, a greater sense of union within yourself also. Don't backtrack. If any of you are questioning whether or not you should allow this person back into your life or stay in the same type of situation, do not backtrack. You have come too far for that at this point, right? Okay, what do I want to do now? A last shuffle with the clarifying deck just to get, let's get some advice on how to move forward here. Yes, instead of just saying, man, don't go back to that. Let's give you some more, see if we can get some more practical advice here. Yes. So just to close this out from the tarot here, what are some closing messages you have for this situation, please, Spirit? Closing advice. The sun is at the bottom of the deck again. And the, the first thing that I felt when the sun, with this sun here is everything is going to be okay. All right. Everything is going to be okay. But what you need to do in this situation is allow the illumination that's working on coming forward for you, allowing the clarity, allowing the understanding, allowing the knowledge and the wisdom that you're gaining from this situation or is available to gain from this situation, allow that to sink into your reality. Don't fight against that. Um, don't push that away. Don't worry about it. Yeah, it stings, it burns, but ultimately it's providing you with a greater sense of clarity so that you can move forward in your life. You have a choice here. You have a choice between two options. Well, okay. I mean, you could have a choice between multiple options, but all right, you have a choice between two options here, the two of wands. Those two options are either the seven of cups, confusion, the same old thing, diving back into the, the mockery, weird, okay. Or you can choose boundaries, seven of cups or seven of wands. The choice is yours. Look, either way, first and foremost, don't let me tell you what to do, okay? It's your life. And either way, no matter which one you choose, there's still something to be learned in the situation. That's what I'm getting from the number seven here, okay? There's still some sort of wisdom that you can gain, but you can take, you can go down the easy path, which technically in this situation feels like the seven of wands, creating boundaries and holding those boundaries, or you could take the, the harder way, Seven of Cups, diving back into the chaos and the madness just for the sake of, well, let's let's give it another try and let's see what happens. Okay, you could do that. But remember where you are, Ten of Swords, or at least where this situation has left you at this point, Ten of Swords. Choice is yours. And I, I honestly, I don't... I don't want that to come across condescending, even though it might have already. Um, condescending or judgmental. Again, it's your life, you know? And either way, you'll always be able to learn something. It just ma it's just a matter of how much longer do you want to have to be dealing with something like this? And, and well, yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, Oracle Guidance, and that is coming from Beyond Lemuria. <sighs> All right, five shuffles. One. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Wait, hold on. Let's try that again. One. I find it really interesting. The last two morning coffee readings of this week were really long and in depth, like almost 40 minutes. We haven't, we're already at, well, almost over 40 minutes. We're all, we're already at the Oracle Guidance and we're not even 25 minutes in, well, almost 25 minutes in, but you get it. Okay, two. I just, 
But but we're wrapping up the story. And that's one of the things that I love about Morning Coffee. Even just my readings in general for the collective here on YouTube, they often tend to be... We often talk about the same story until we get from the beginning to the end, and then we move on to another whole, a whole other circumstance, and I really kind of love that. Okay. This is three. Four. And five. Alrighty, y'all. Closing Oracle Guidance here. And also keep in mind that this doesn't have to be connected to the rest, to what we were talking about earlier in the week. This You could be coming into the situation having just seen this reading, and this resonates for you where you are in your path, and this is really the only message that you may need. You don't necessarily need to listen to the, the other two or three message that, messages that are connected to this, but you can if you want to. Like that general situation, guys. General reading, yeah? Okay. Anyway. Closing Oracle Guidance. There it is. Look at that. Oh, this is one of my favorite cards in this deck. All right. This is card number 12. Water. The Overflow. Didn't this card come out the last time we used this deck? Hmm. Anyway. All right. Water. The overflow. Abundance. Non-attachment. The paradigm of no scarcity. Allowing financial and energetic gifts to flow through and create more. During one of my most pivotal Lemurian visions... I was guided into a life where I lived a humble I lived in a humble mud hut. As I could create any thought in the multiple dimensions that I had access to, I simultaneously resided in a beautiful crystalline palace. I found myself in a paradigm where I could create anything at will, and thus there was no concept of scarcity nor the need to hold on to anything. This experience initiated a shift that changed my life. We may only be starting to touch at this notion in our mundane reality. When we give more from a place of overflow than obligation, even when we think we have nothing, having it come from this mindset can only create a more abundant flow of what we want. The being in this picture has many hands, and yet still, the water is allowed to fall through her fingers. It blesses her in the moments it touches her radiant skin and then continues on its journey. Her heart is also overflowing with love. Her eyes are filled with tears. She allows what comes through to move her without control. She gracefully allows whatever she is feeling to be expressed, and as she does so, she radiates so much light into the world. The themes here are allowing for flow, receptivity, the path of least resistance, purity, clearing away that which no longer serves, and emotion. There you have it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. I love you all so very much, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee on Monday morning. Yeah? Take care. Bye.